Hello, how you doing? It's James here. I hope you're doing really good. So today I'm going to show you how to capture the impulse response or the reverb of a room so you can use that in your production, in your mixes. I went to a studio called The Brook, which uh, used to be based in South London. It subsequently closed, unfortunately, but they've got a fantastic live room there. So I set up a mic and some speakers. I'll show you a picture of it now so you can see the live room. And I recorded that reverb. So if we just have a quick listen to what I did, I'm going to show you just a sample first of like a little snap, which is completely dry. Then I'm going to add the reverb to it. Here's the snap. And now with the reverb. So that is the sound of that room. I'm going to show you how to do that with Logic using Space Designer. So you can use that in Logic, but then I'll also show you how to use it in another IR loader. Okay, stick around. I'll show you what to do. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to show you how it's done by taking a measurement in this room in my studio. It's not going to sound very good because it, there's basically no reverb in this room because I've treated it quite heavily. But I'm going to show you the method and then I'm going to bring in the sample that I did at the brook so you can get an idea of how it works. Right now, the first thing you need to do is load up an instance of Space Designer. So do this on any audio track. It doesn't matter if it's mono or stereo, it doesn't really make a difference at the moment. Now we're gonna go up here and we're gonna to go to open IR utility. Okay, now this is gonna bring up this dialog, but to start off with, let's cancel that. And firstly, we wanna to go to new, so you can open or rather create a new project. Now the reason I cancel that first is because you don't get all these different configurations if you don't do that. So there's a whole load of things you can choose from here. For this particular example and for the, what I did for the, at the brook as well, I just did mono. So what we're doing is we've got one mic position and one speaker position. Okay, so you could do stereo and you've got two mic positions, one speaker position, and you can do, do true stereo, which has two of each, for example. So just set up for as, as many things as your plans do. So we're gonna go mono for now. Okay, now it's one thing to, to bear in mind, if you load this up, because you might load it up and it's already got a waveform on there. Yeah, it might already have something on there. So in which case, just if you just hit record, just hit the R here, it's gonna ask you if you want to delete that waveform, then just say, yes, we wanna delete it, and it's basically starting a new project. Now, first thing to do if you haven't done it already is just set your main ins and outs for which interface you're using. So I'm using uh, Universal Audio Apollo. Say so I've already got that set up the top here, which should be good to go. And next is we've got a few things along the left here. I'll just take you through what those are. So the monitor. Now this is where you're gonna be listening back to the recorded sound, okay? That, that's very important. So that the sound that you've already recorded, this is what, that's where you're gonna be listening back. So I have that set to one and two, cause that's my main outs. Um, and just, it's probably best to just mute that for now, just to make sure you don't get any kind of feedback issues. Um, I shouldn't do, but just in case it's always best to do. Okay, next up is you set your ins and outs of where you're going to be sending the sound out of. So you're gonna be sending out a sweep. This, this sweep just goes out into the room, coming out of those speakers that you have set up in the room. And then the ins will be the microphone that you have set up to capture the sweep. Okay, so if we just see that picture again of the brook, you'll see I've got the speaker at one end of the room, I've got the microphone at the other end of the room. So here you'll set your output. So if you have multiple outputs, like on my sound card, I've got more than one output, you can send it out for a separate one if you like. So we could go out of line output three, and then I'll be sending that to the speakers in the room. For this example, I'm just gonna use my current speakers. So we're just gonna go with the, with, with the first output. And then we wanna do the input. So that's over here. As you can see, we're actually getting some things already. And um, because that is my microphone, which is actually currently sitting in the room. So choose the input. Where is that coming in on your sound card? In this case, it's just in the first input, nice and simple. And that is pretty much good to go. Next, you can do a test. So we've got here, we've got a sweep, we've got a test tone. So if you press that on, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to bring the volume down for now. Put that on and you can test that output that you have. Okay, so this is the output which is going to your speakers. So if I'm, I'm just going to bring that up and you'll, you're going to hear that come out in a room. Okay, so just remember that is one which is going out to your speakers and you can just test and make sure you're getting a good level on your microphone. So this is a point where you would trigger that on and then check the level coming in on your microphone. So let's have a look. This is a level right here coming in on my microphone. Obviously it's picking up my voice as well. Um, when, when you're maybe doing that, you'll either A, if it's in the same room that you're in, shut up. 
or it'll be in a different room, so it won't matter anyway. Okay, once you've got a decent level and it's not clipping, but you're getting something which is getting a good signal to noise ratio. So if this was my input, we probably want to get it get into about minus six or something at the max. We don't want it to be, we definitely don't want it to be overloading. Once you've got your level set, we're very much nearly there. We've got a couple of options here. So mode, this is how long the sweep is gonna be. I just set it to five seconds. That is that has been good so far, but I've also tried it um, on a few different things. And so far I'm just kind of liking, liking five seconds. The next thing is a reverb time. So that's how long you want this reverb to be. Now bear in mind, if you don't have a very big room, it's not worth having a reverb time of 96 seconds because you're not gonna be capturing anything that's 96 seconds long. When I did this, I did like a, a five second and a 10 second, but we, in to be fair, I didn't really need as long as that either. So kind of set it to a level it seems to represent how how big your room might be. If it's a big monster of a room, you can you can, you can can get like a couple of seconds or something if you like, but if it's not, then just, just set it around there and you should be okay. Right, now we're basically in a good place to do the sweep. All we need to do is hit record enable and now you'll notice that this button is no longer grayed out and you can click that. Just bear in mind if you're doing this in the room that you're currently sitting in that you're currently recording in it is going to be coming out of speakers it might be fairly loud depending on how you set it so watch your ears or go and get out of the room if you really want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run that now um, so you can see what it does. Okay here it comes. That's taking that measurement. Now let's just choose a place to save that. I'm gonna call it room two. And this is the sound that it's taken. This isn't in a position to be used at all yet. First, we need to deconvolve. So hit that. And now we have our impulse response. It's still not quite ready to use because you need to trim the fat a little bit. As you'll notice, if we just zoom in, we've got all this gap at the start. We don't really want that. So if we just highlight some of that and then we click cut, just trim that down a little bit and you can have a listen to this if you hit the play on here or spacebar let's go like that okay so what we want what we can do is we can still trim that a little bit from the start because we don't need all of that and then let's take a little bit of the end as well we probably don't need it quite as long as that. And you can apply the slight fade as well. There we go. Right, now that is a much tidier impulse response and we're ready to do something with it. Now, before we get all the way back into Logic, you can test this out. You can test this out with some of their sounds just to see if it's of use. So if we go Audition IR, it's gonna bring up this little dialogue here. So make sure you set the channels accordingly. So we're gonna use track one, which was the one that we just did. And where do you want it to be playing out of? It's gonna be output channel one which is where I was monitoring. And then what you can do is you can use one of these preloaded sounds to test this IR. So you've got a mix here. So let's go all the way to the right, 100%, choose a snare. Now the problem is there's not gonna be any reverb on this because my room, as I said, is dead as hell. But if you've done that in a room with actual reverb in it, then you're gonna hear that. So I'm gonna, now we're gonna go to the next part where you'll get to see what I've done with the sound that I recorded in the brook. If you're liking this video, please do me a favor and hit the old like and subscribe and the notification bell and I will let you know of upcoming videos. Also, if you want some free stuff, then just sign up to the main list. I'll send you an EQ cheat sheet and some one shot drum hits that you can use in your mixes. Okay, let's carry on. The next step is to create the setting. Now this is creating the setting in Space Designer to enable you to use it in that plugin. So let's go create setting. Let's call it something. We're gonna call it just what I've already called it already. So room two, and that is the name of the setting. Now this is quite important. Make a note of this location. Write this down somewhere, copy and paste it into somewhere where you know where it is because this is the file that is created and it's it's telling you where it's creating that file. You're gonna need that later. Okay, so we're gonna say, okay for now, happy days. Let's go into Space Designer and as you load up a, a new instance of it, go over to the settings over here, all of the presets and you'll notice there's the one that we just created, room two. And all you need to do is load up room two, hit the wet, and that is your reverb. You're ready to use it in Space Designer. Happy days. Just so you can actually hear that in action, I loaded up the one from the brook that I did. So this is our, my 10 second one that I've got there. And let's just have a quick listen to that. So I've got my snap, which I had earlier, which is just this little sample which is just a snap like that. Okay, and without the reverb goes like this. 
Okay, and then with the reverb, this is the one from the brook as mentioned. And there you go, so that is the sound designer preset that I've already brought in. So basically, you're good to go. If you're just using it in uh, Space Designer, then you don't need to go any further. But what if you wanna use that in a different IR loader? Maybe you wanna use it in the Waves one or um, Ultiverb or something like that. You totally can, but first you need to turn it into a WAV file. Now to do that, you need to locate this uh, Space Designer file, which came up on that dialogue earlier. Now where it's actually gonna default, just so you know, is it's gonna be in your, if you're on a Mac, which you will be, because it's logic, uh, it's gonna be your user, music, audio music apps, impulse responses, and then it will live in here. So as you can see, this is room two. This is the one that I created before. And now all you need to do to now make that a WAV is change the suffix and then it's good to go. So we're gonna just hit WAV on the end of that. It's gonna say, do we wanna use it or do we wanna keep it as it was? We're gonna use WAV, thank you very much. And then this WAV is what you'll bring in to an IR loader. So let's go over to Waves. As mentioned, I'm not gonna bring in the IR of this room because it's pointless. So I'm gonna bring in the one which I made from the brook. So there we go, so 10 seconds. This is, this is the same one that I was using in Space Designer just now, but I was using the Space Designer file. Now I just changed the suffix and now we're good to go. So we're gonna open that up and then let's have a little go. So this is a snap without it. And now I'm gonna send it over to the Waves version of the IR loader with the same impulse response as a WAV. And there you go, you're ready to rock. And it's as simple as that. As mentioned, it doesn't need to be limited to just use it, using it in Space Designer. You can use it in other IR loaders as well. Just make sure you change the suffix afterwards and then you should be ready to rock. So go and try that in all different rooms. Try and stick it in the, the stairway in your house or go and stick it in a, a room with reverb, basically a room with reverb. If you find a room which actually sounds quite cool, then why not try and capture the reverb and see if you can use it? If you're in a studio which has a nice big room, then why not set up some more mics like what and this, with this one all I did was was one mic and one speaker but I could have gone much further with it much much further you could set up two speakers and two microphones you can get a true stereo image of that room and it might be something which is much more usable I just I just did one for now just so you could see it as an example and it doesn't necessarily matter what mic you use for this but it is preferable to use something which is a little bit more flat response so I used a measurement mic because it doesn't really it's got nothing that's really color in the sound but you could you could still just use a standard condenser mic ideally something which has a good frequency response which is going to be capturing as much of the frequency as possible try to avoid something with too much coloration like a tube mic or something like that because that can already have a little bit more vibe that you may be not looking for or maybe you want to maybe you want the vibe maybe that's what you're going for or maybe you just want to use an sm58 nice and grotty and you know you're, you're capturing the sound of a room with a 58 that's totally cool too it's just worth bearing in mind which mic you're going to use to do so okay any questions hit me up beneath in the comments and we can talk about it but otherwise thanks for watching i'll see you next time